This is the Total Freedom Podcast, presenting number one best-selling author, Christopher Duncan, bringing you proven strategies to free your time, free your mind, and free your income, so that you can do more of what matters most. Learn more at ChristopherMDuncan.com. Welcome to the Total Freedom Podcast with your host, Christopher Duncan. Today, um, you know, it's so great to be here with Zach, and Zach's a mindset coach, uh, entrepreneur, you're, you're heaps of things, man. I think a lot of times you're understated. So I'm going to just say all the things that I want uh, the world to hear about you. you you're, you're such a genuine and vulnerable, heart-centered guy that's done some massive things. And so listeners, I want you to hear this. He turned his day job into a lifestyle business. He escaped his nine to five. He built a national marketing program for 150, over 150 companies, generating over 27 million. Uh, the guys literally use Kickstarter uh, he's had a startup business selling these amazing sunglasses that got featured by Tim Ferriss, I believe, doing over $300,000 uh, in your first year. You've been over 50 publications. And I know you don't think you've crushed it, but from my perspective, man, uh, what you've been able to achieve, not only to take your day job and turn it into a freedom business, not only to start a business and use Kickstarter, not only to get all this coverage, uh, it's absolutely awesome to have you here, man. But um, how would you introduce yourself other than what I've just said to all the people out there who, who don't know you yet. Yeah, I think the simplest way is just that I'm a mindset coach now for high performers, and I've been, I've been doing that all along. So I wanted to be able to relate to people and really be able to connect with them on that level, and not just like talking as, oh, hey, I'm a mindset coach, but hey, I've actually walked the walk, I've actually done some things, and, and yeah, yeah, so that's what I do now. It's epic. And, and listeners, um, how I met Zach was I actually went to a really cool conference. I think it must have been two, two and a half years ago where I actually met your mom and Michelle. And Michelle was at that stage my NLP coach. And you've actually done a lot of the same NLP training that I've done as well, which I still believe is the best in the world. And so I know what you're doing with clients is just is next level because it was huge for me. Um, but at that stage, you were still in your uh, – you're still in your first start. Was that your first startup? No, no. I mean, I've been doing startups for years and years. It was probably the first one that actually like took off into being a, a, a big boy business. Right. Where it's like more than t-shirts and websites and, and, uh, and all that kind of stuff. But it was the sunglasses company, William Painter. So yeah. that was the one that got in all the magazines and got all the celebrities and all that stuff. Which is so, yeah. so cool. It's really cool. So let's start off with this, man. I mean, listeners, today we're going to be talking about startups. We're going to be talking about freeing yourself from your job. We're, we've got two guys uh, on the call who are both in our, our mid-20s. Uh, well, me, I'm mid-late to 20s. I'm getting old, man. And um, <laughs> we've both been able to create freedom businesses. Um, and so you guys are going to learn a lot today from what we're going to share. But before we do that, they know so much about me because I talk about myself too much. But uh, let's hear your story, man, uh, from, from where you started to, to where you are now. All right. So the story starts in college. Um, I was going to school and one day, I, I basically, I didn't have a job or anything like that. And one day my girlfriend was like badgering me and kind of saying like, well, why don't you have a job? What, what's wrong with you? You think you're too good for this? I'm like, no, 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 no. I want to start businesses. I want to do this kind of stuff. And um, <laughs> I couldn't afford to take her out. So I ended up just kind of sucking it up. And then I started being a ticket taker. So like the guy, when you have the shows, they come in, scan your ticket, show you to your seat. And that's what I was doing. And I remember one day in particular that uh, my manager at the time, uh, like I was leaning against this rail and there's like this show going on. There's like 10,000 people downstairs, like watching the show and she comes around and she's just like, you can't, you can't do that. You can't be leaning like that. I'm like, there are 10,000 people looking the other way. Why does it matter? And uh, that was kind of one of the first moments where I said, okay, that's, I'm not doing that anymore. So from that point, I kind of made a decision and then I wanted to start freedom businesses. I picked up the four hour work week uh, started a sandals company uh, called Greek Love, where we sold uh, sorority branded uh, sandals to girls, uh, sold those all across the country. Then I went and worked for a business coaching firm where I basically got paid to get an MBA and then learn a bunch of different stuff there that people pay two grand a month in order to learn. And then I took that, those concepts and kind of rolled them into my own businesses and then started the sunglasses company and then... <laughs> 
yeah, it's just kind of kept unfolding until now where I'm doing mindset coaching. That's just awesome. And so you're like me where we're completely unemployable. Um, mm -hmm. Completely. Yeah. Now, there's one thing about your story that I want to dive into that I know that you that we haven't, haven't talked about. And that is when, uh, t tell me about taking the job when you had the job and then turning it into a way that you didn't have to have the job anymore and you literally got paid because it's phenomenal. This is, here's my understanding of what happened. Yeah. Yeah. Zach's doing this job and he's there doing marketing and some sort of concept for this business coaching firm. He figures out a way to get the job done without him needing to be there. And then basically you sell it back to the company in exchange to your wage and then walk away. Which pretty much. Yeah, that's pretty much exactly it. So they, so what they did is they do business coaching. So they teach CEOs and salespeople all across the country, basically how to run their business better. They're really good at the operational side of their business, but they were not very good at the marketing, the finance, the management, all that kind of stuff. So I saw an opportunity in marketing. And then the biggest thing that we were doing was we were telling people, we were telling business owners, yeah, you got to be marketing your business. You got to do email marketing, but they're all too busy and they never had time to do it. So I'm sitting at my job one day and I finish everything early and I'm just bored. So I just start messing around and I make this advertisement. And I send it in to my boss and I'm like, what do you think of this? And he goes, we've never seen that before. Can you send me another one? And then I kept sending them in and in and in and in. And then I basically turned, I basically created a business within that company. So I basically created a free freedom business within that company. And then now I just kind of keep everything running. Cause what it would do is it would generate leads for people. And so it'd be email marketing it generate leads. We generated over $27 million in leads for all their clients. So then when they would look at my yearly salary, they go, okay, he costs, you know, this much, uh, this much a year and he's providing our clients with these kinds of results. It kind of makes the ROI make sense for them to keep on paying for me to do this stuff. So now, I mean, even to this day, I like still do that, but I've min been able to like minimize the amount of time that it takes for me to run that. So, I mean, I spend, you know, 90% of my time working on my mindset coaching business and, and, uh, yeah, traveling around the world. It's awesome. So yeah. I was kind of taking some notes and, and trying to like unpack what you did, because I know there's people listening right now that would love to figure out how to create a little business inside of their business. And I think it kind of went like this. Number one, you saw an opportunity. Number two, you kind of gave value first, right? You, you, oh yeah. You went and said, hey, look, I can do this. And then you did it. And Tim teaches this as well, right? You get the result first and then be like, look, this is what I can do. And then I guess you, at some point, you must have had to be like, hey, I don't actually need to turn up to work to make this happen. I can just, yeah. you know, is it okay if I, how did that work? Yeah. So, I mean, the second I picked up the book, The 4-Hour Workweek, I was just like, that's it. That's what I want to do. And that's what I'm making happen. So he lays out all the steps in the book of how to like make your job a remote job. And then I just went to work on doing that. And I actually implemented something you teach as like one of the first things of actually interviewing your target customers and fi figuring out what they want rather than guessing. Because I was on the phone all the time and I would talk with uh, the CEOs and they're like, yeah, I know I should be marketing, but I just don't have any time for it. So that's exactly what I went to work building. That was the opportunity that I saw was they have no time to market their business. So if I put together a thing where, you know, in 10 minutes you can set up your email marketing and automate it for a year, and then you're going to get warm leads handed to your salespeople. And if they close it, you're going to make hundreds of thousands of dollars and not have to do anything. It was really easy to get them to say yes. So, so that's, so that's kind of like the opportunity I saw and, and how I went after it. And then I just made, I just had to like make everything happen. Um, and yeah, I mean, it was still a struggle, but the, my employers at the time, they were still open-minded enough and like visionary enough to give me some leeway and like, let me just create. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I had people that I'd never met before who had made hundreds of thousands of dollars using that program. So, so that was, that was pretty cool. And then it's like, here, do we want to keep paying this guy to keep this thing going? Yeah. It's an easy decision. That's epic. Well done. Yeah. Like, I love it. I love it. Yeah. It's, uh, it. You've told it to me a few times and it was just so nice to now get it out and tell everyone else because, yeah. you know, 
we read the books and we hear the stories and we know it. But sometimes it, we're, we're so far away from somebody that's actually done it. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, great. But when we, when we hear, you know, it's, it's absolutely awesome. And so listeners out there, you know, you've just got to, got to do it. And a lot of people don't do it, which is interesting. And so you're doing mindset coaching now, um, which I believe is, is super neat and super valuable and not enough, enough people have a coach. Uh, would you just explain from your perspective, you know, the, why people need a coach? Because honestly, I think everyone needs one. And yeah, let's just start with that. Why do people actually need a coach? Because a lot of people think, you know, I don't need a coach. I don't need that. I'm good. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, you look at the, you look at some of the highest paid executives as well as the best athletes ever, and they all have coaches and if they don't, I don't know if they, they don't, nobody needs a coach. Like everyone's getting through life fine. And I think that people are, are fine. But if you want to kind of go to that next level, having a coach helps because they can see your blind spots. They're paid to be completely unbiased and give you harsh feedback that nobody else in your life can give you. Like everybody else has a vested interest in you and whether it's your friends or your family, um, you know, they can't really just be that blunt with you. So that's, I mean, I see tremendous value in having it and that's kind of why I do it. And yeah. And yeah. You know what? It's, it's really interesting that you say that. Cause I say that to people all the time. I'm like, you've got to have somebody that can give you non-emotional based uh, advice, like no emotion, like they're not your friend. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a lot of times I've become friends with my coaches and then had to find an another coach or another mentor. I, w I really want to, I really want to get this across to listeners. And so I'm going to, I'm going to dive into it. I think, a lot of people, a lot of people can't see the ROI on coaching, Zach. It freaks me out. Oh, I'll tell you why. So you're moving from A to B and you're going like this and here's your B, here's your A. And if you fall off, here's what a coach does, stops that and puts you back onto the right path. Now, here's the interesting thing is the coach saw you going down to like here, right? You were going off course and down here was complete misery. But yeah. the coach stops you. And then you end up here. And so here's the interesting thing, man. I've coached some people like, oh, yeah, you know, Chris, it was good. And I'm like, good? I just saved you five <laughs> years of pain. Yeah. But they can't experience that. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. they, they never have to go there because you save them. And then and they so never get the perspective. Yeah. It, it's and such a... a Sometimes it can be so unrewarding because you want them to know that you help them so much, but they can't, right? Yeah, well, here's, I have, I have one example. So one client that I was working with lately, I've had like a couple of those pretty cool breakthrough moments through the NLP stuff that, that you know and that Michelle knows. And, and, um, and that you know. So, yeah, <laughs> that I know. So I had one client who, he's a early stage startup guy. Uh, he's had a little bit of success and have everything validated. He's like launching online courses mm -hmm. and building up this uh, academy for, you know, entrepreneurs that want to travel around the world, be digital nomads. And what he, the belief that he had going on in his head was basically, uh, I'm not enough. Therefore, he felt like an imposter when you'd go out on, on dates. So he just felt like, you know, I'm not making as much money as I should be. So I, I can't go date pretty women and blah, 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 blah. Right. So for two years, he didn't go on one date. Wow. We had one session. We just did a little bit of NLP stuff, some course sorting. And, and uh, I call him two weeks later and I was like, hey, man, how's everything going? Anything changing in your mindset? And he's like, no, I mean, I don't really think so. And I'm going, oh, no. Oh, no. Uh I didn't, I didn't over deliver. And then he goes, well, you know, I have gone on like seven dates in the past two weeks. And then a couple of weeks later, he gets a girlfriend and now they're posting pictures on social media and they're all happy. But it's like, those are the kinds of like of tiny little shifts that when you make them opens up your whole world. And it's not just in relationships. It's like when you make those decisions in business, mm -hmm. I, like I had another client, he, he was, his thing was confidence. And, um, I pushed him to have like basically the most vulnerable com conversation of his life with this girl that he's really attracted to. He ends up going out there. He's Mr. CEO. He's, I mean, super successful real estate guy. They bought and sold, you know, 30 something properties last year. And he's in his early twenties. 
And I push him to have this conversation where basically he has to let go of control. Like that's like the ultimate nightmare for most CEOs. So I push him to have this conversation. He ends up not only getting the dream girl, but a couple of weeks later they have a uh, investor meeting and the guy gets offered half a million dollars in investment in his company. So it's like, that's why I'm, that's why I'm so passionate about mindset coaching because when you give yourself permission to have like those little things, it, like the spillover benefits that happen as a result, like if he's willing to be vulnerable and go deep and actually be frank and tell people what's going on, investors responded to that really well. And I mean, I can't take credit for all of that, but just like, it's kind of interesting on the timing of how that works. Yeah, it is. So I think there's probably people listening and I'm definitely intrigued going, okay, I'm, I'm hearing you and this makes a lot of sense. Um, and I loved one thing that you just said then, and it's giving yourself permission, uh, giving yourself permission to actually go and go and do that. So what's your advice to the person out there that knows they're ready to start a business or knows they're ready to go and get their relationship or travel or they know they're ready, but for some reason they're not doing it. Uh, what's your advice for that person that knows what they should do, has everything in front of them. In fact, has the right mentor, the right training, the right story, everything like it's all there. But for some reason, they're just not stepping into that place. How can they do that? Mm. Well, they can call me for a session. <laughs> no, um, I think the biggest thing is looking at the ecology. And for people that, for the listeners that aren't aware of that term, it's basically what might you lose that you value if you had this change? Because a lot of times people will, will want to make that change, but it will kind of screw up the rest of their life. So, I mean, here, the one common one that I have is people that want to become wealthy, but they presuppose that everyone that's wealthy, they're just greedy bastards that cheat everybody out. So yeah. it's, so no matter, so if you have, if you read all the books, you do all the podcasts, you go to all the workshops, you take all the courses, you have the mentors, but the underlying belief is, well, now I'm going to become one of those greedy bastards. Yeah. You won't, you won't let yourself do it and you'll constantly self-sabotage. So figuring out your beliefs and lining that stuff up, that's, that's what I think is keeping most people locked in that's huge that's huge and i think you, you mentioned a session and uh i know it was a it was an off comment but i think everyone should have a session with you is there a way that they can get in touch or do you have a discounted session or something that that we can offer the, the listeners yeah i mean people right now they can go to my site and there's a, a button up at the top where you can schedule a ses session so i only I mean, I only have time for so many people and I want to make sure that I'm working with people that one, I believe in what they're doing and I think they're making a positive impact on the world and two, that we're a fit and like they actually need what it is that I can help them with. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, if they go to my website, click the button that says book a session, they can sign up for like a 15 minute so we'll call. We'll put that like down here in the show yeah. notes somewhere. Uh, yeah, and yeah, if you're yeah. listening to this on iTunes, just go to ChristopherMDuncan.com and there's a link to go and do that. So I want to ask you a time travel moment and it's one of my favorite questions and there's two parts to it and it re I just love it because it's obviously a modeling question which you get. So uh, if you could take yourself back uh, to the old version of you, whenever that was um, mm -hmm. before whatever you have now yeah. um, and you were able to go across time and space and sit down next to that person and just give that person a piece of advice or share, what would you tell yourself right back then when you're very first starting? Mm. I would tell him you can't escape the leap. I was so convinced back in the day because I pick up the four hour work week and I'm like, oh, we can figure out how to pre-sell everything and then we're not going to have risk and then I can kind of gradually inch my way into entrepreneurship rather than taking that leap that everybody talks about. And I tried so hard for so long to not have to take that leap. Huh. But eventually I had to. And I, I remember the moment it was, I mean, I mean, I had already, so fast forward to where I'm building up companies. We had the sunglasses company. So here's where we're at. We had just got it in 
all the major publications like Esquire, Maxim, GQ, and we're getting on those gift guides. We just had a month where we had you know forty five grand in sales. Um, we still owed like a bunch of money to investors and everything like that, but it was starting to work. Mm -hmm. And we had like all the celebrities and everything starting to wear our stuff. And we're like, Oh my God, this is actually going to work. And then what happens was I just, I noticed this like tension in me where I was kind of sick of building things and I wanted to start building people. And at that moment, it was the leap that I've been trying to avoid for eight years uh, of that. I have no idea how this is going to go. I don't, I don't know what's going to happen, but we were in this boardroom. We're having this meeting and basically we're trying to figure out how we're going to scale up the company. And we have these advisors coming in and we're meeting with all these like super powerful mentors and all that stuff. And I'm just like, Oh my gosh, this is actually working. It's actually working, but I didn't feel lined up with it. And it just felt a little bit out of alignment for who I am and who I wanted to become. And then in that meeting, I basically said it was the hardest sentence I've had to say in my life was I had to look at all my business partners in the eye and I had to say, I'm going to have to go do my own thing. Like I, I can't, I can't keep doing this. And I took that leap huh. that I had been trying so hard to avoid for years and years and years. And wow. um, yeah, scariest moment ever. Like it was super emotional because it's like, you're like, imagine starting the business and then imagine it actually working. And then imagine building it up with some of your closest friends. And then you're finally in that position where you just know it's not right. And it, you know that like it wasn't my involvement. It, it just wasn't going to work because I wanted to do the freedom business route and they wanted to become like next Steve Jobs. Yeah. And it just got different. And then I had to be honest with that. I think that's sometimes the hardest thing is, is making that decision and making that leap. So Let's, let's just dive into that for a second. Uh, what advice would you give somebody right now who knows that? They know what they're doing and where they're going isn't where they're going to end up and they have to make the leap. Uh, well, how do you they got, do that? Well, I mean, I, everyone over glorifies the idea of just like, just quitting your job and like stopping that all together and doing that. What I recommend doing is take your job, turn it into a consulting agreement and and figure out if you can do that so that you have some income and you have a little bit of some stability rather than just like quitting everything and going at it. But there has to be a leap. Like you'll know it, it has to scare you, but I don't, I don't think it's, it's wise to just completely let everything go. And everyone's kind of like waiting for the ideal opportunity to start their business. They're like, Oh, you know, once I get this money and then I'll start it. Like, no, you need to start it now and you need to be actually doing something mm -hmm. and, you know, be smart about it. But no matter how smart you are, you have, you will confront that moment where you have to just do it. And it's, it's, you'll know because it just scares the shit out of you and, and your heart is like pumping out of your chest. And like, following that feeling that's what's given me like some of the best experiences ever like that's huge. business life relationship anything that's yeah. huge so yeah that's huge man i love it um look we're we're just we're just sitting on time i mean i could just dive into that so much um and, and learn more about that but we're just about to tick over to the time that that we need to say goodbye so before we do, is, is there any like lasting informational piece of advice you want to leave with the audience who are ready to take that leap, who are ready to shift, who are ready to change their mindset? What would you like to share with them just before, before we do say goodbye? Uh, first thing is just surround yourself with mentors. Find people that have got the result that you want and then go learn from them. I know you are big on this one and <laughs> yeah. I couldn't agree more with you because that was the thing with all the business stuff. I was never any smarter than anybody. I was never uh, cl more clever. There's none of that. But what I was willing to do is we had like this list of like 20 something mentors where anytime we got stuck in business, we could just start calling down the list. And what do you know, every single one of them has gone through that exact same problem and then they could help us with the answer. And it was just like, no matter what it was, they'd been there before they'd already handled that. And that is that stopping thing that you were talking about. Yeah. They saved us decades and decades and decades, but we are willing to actually do it. And we are willing to actually put ourselves out there, be vulnerable and ask. 
and yeah. uh, get over that whole ego thing of like, oh, no, I don't need a coach. It's like, <laughs> no, you don't, but it'll be a lot faster if you have one. I know. You don't need one. Just it's, it's literally the smartest thing to do is to have somebody who's already done it. Man, I appreciate your time so much. I know that time is the only finite asset that we really truly have. And so thank you for spending some time with us. Uh, here on the uh, the Total Freedom Podcast. Everyone, I'm going to put in the uh, in the link below or on my website, christophermduncan.com forward slash podcast, the links to Zach's site so you can go and go and get a session. And I really do say go and go and explore that because when you move you out of your way and when you when you actually find somebody like Zach who just loves and you probably see him or heard him light up when he hears about results that someone else gets, that's a rare person to find and you've just been introduced to one right now so if it says in your heart this is something you need to do i highly recommend uh going and checking out zach so appreciate you man uh thank you for being here and listeners go out there and live with total freedom free your mind free your time free your life so you can do more of what matters most to you make sure you go and check out all the free resources on christophermduncan.com love you so much smash it this has been the total freedom podcast learn more at christophermduncan.com Use the hashtag, hashtag TotalFreedomTV, and Chris will answer your questions. What are you doing to create freedom today?